okay so these are the theory now let us look at one example okay so in this example uh, a cantilever beam is given like this which is subjected to 300 kN per meter and you have a bar which is eight numbers of 25 mm diameter okay so this is your eight numbers i am though i am showing here only three bars let's say that these bars are provided in two layers right so i am having eight numbers of 25 mm bar on the tension side and on the compression side i have four numbers of 25 mm so it's a doubly reinforced section uh, and uh, uh, we have to check the adequacy of anchorage for long tail bars for both tension and compression and we have to suggest appropriate modifications required because the column dimensions here given is 450 m right and uh, these are the uh, dimensions that currently proposed we are going to check what are the anchorage that is provided is adequate or not right and the total load that is acting on the beams including dead loads uh, live load everything they are saying that it is going to be 300 kN per meter and the length of the cantilever from the edge of the column is 2 meter right and you can see the depth is also it's a tapering section varying from 250 at the free end to 500 mm at the fixed end so now let us look at whether the length provided is adequate or not now how do we do that for tension bars we have seen that they are providing eight numbers of 25 mm diameter right so let us look at now what are the bond stress we are using m40 grade of concrete so tau bd is basically 1.9 and these values are applicable for smooth bars here we are using deformed bars so what i have to do for tau bd whatever the value that i get 1.8 i need to multiply this by 1.6 60 percentage increase so that's what we have done and we got a value right and then development length equation that we got as 0.87 fi is the maximum stress that i need to develop divided by 4 times tau bd times the diameter of the bar and the diameter of the bar what we have is 25 mm diameter right so 0.87 and grid of steel what i am using is 500 so 0 0.87 times 500 divided by 4 into tau bd times diameter requires that i need to provide 35.8 times the diameter which is 25 mm that much length i need to provide then only i can develop at this section stress of 0 0.87 f5 okay that is the stress that i i want to develop maximum stress that is allowed as per the is code right so now if you look at it ld works out to be 895 millimeter now how much is actually there okay if you go back so what is it here you have 350 here you have 300 then there is one standard 90 degree bend for standard 90 degree bend we have seen that we can take a equivalent anchorage length of eight times the diameter of the bend. so now let us look at how much we get so three 350 plus 300 which is this this i have added in addition to that for this particular hook 90 degree bend i can take eight times the diameter of the bar so when you do that i get 850 mm required right but 850 mm is actually available but i need 895 millimeter so you see here it is short by 45 millimeter somehow i have to account for this part instead of 300 maybe i have to extend it by another 50 mm then it may be okay so let's check so what we are concluding is on the tension side the provided anchorage is actually not adequate right so now let's do the same exercise and check whether the compression steel which is on the bottom side is actually okay or not okay for compression bars again same concrete so this is going to be 1.9 so and then what is it we have discussed for compression there are not going to be cracks and also i'm going to develop bond through bearing right end bearing so that is the reason the code is allowing you to use one additional 25 percentage increase for tau big right so your development length has to come down so again if you plug in all the values you get development length of 28.6 times time okay so if you substitute that it works out to be 715 millimeter but what i have given here is only 300 millimeter so it is short by quite a bit okay so this is why it is very important to check for this development length okay uh, otherwise you may not be able to, even though you may provide bars but you may not be able to develop at an ultimate condition the full stress right so this is very very important so the actual length provided is only 300 which is less than 750 mm so provided anchorage is not adequate now how do we fix this okay so now let's check 
so one thing that you said okay if let's say for a particular demand now the load everything is given to you so you can calculate what is the demand that actual demand and see if i have provided more steel then the development length can be reduced because i need to develop for the bending moment that is coming from this section right but usually at this critical sections we should provide development length to produce the actual yield stress otherwise there is no point in providing that extra steel even if you put extra steel you will not be able to develop that stress but anyway in this case let's calculate the so before increasing the anchorage length let's check whether the bars are actually fully stressed or not okay for the demand that what you going so now what is the demand we know maximum moment is wl square by 2 for a cantilever so 300 into 2 square by 2 it works out to 600 kN meter and you have a w reinforced section and uh, uh, we have seen that mu by fck bd square is 0.247 mu limit by fck bd square is 0.133 for fp 500 so you see here which is less than mu fck uh, the actual demand so we have to go for a w reinforced section that's what we have so we have eight numbers of 25 mm bar on the tension side four numbers of 25 mm bar on the uh, compression side so an xc max by d for fe 500 is 0.456 and this is 0.133 that's what we checked so now let's quickly look at uh, ac what are the ac required actually ac required for demand so xc max by d is 205.2 mm then mu limit is 323. 2 kN meter so the difference has to be accounted by the force that i am developing from the compression steel and the additional tension steel so let us look at now what is the ac that is required so again from strain distribution you know you can look at the fluxer videos uh, for how to analyze this section or design for a w reinforced section so you using similar triangle you find that epsilon ac is 0.0265 for this particular Uh, additional demand right so how do we then again we get for a strain of 0.00265265 if i look at the stress strain curve so somewhere here we are there right so you get a stress of about 407.9 so you can calculate what is the area that is required so the area required works out to be 1694 mm square now how much we have actually provided four numbers of 25 mm bar so that works out to be almost about 2000 mm square so and again that has to be again uh, equated by additional ast this we have discussed in w reinforced section so total ast is ast limit plus 0.87 fi uh, that additional steel okay so this is your additional steel. so total steel is this plus this is the additional steel mean you know, right additional tension steel right so if you substitute that you get a value okay and uh, rho t limit is this and uh, you get ast limit as 2041 mm square and then total ast is 3630 mm square now what is that we have really provided tension side we have provided actually instead of 3630 is what actually required but we have provided eight numbers of 25 mm bar and area of 125 mm bar is 491 mm square so when you multiply it by 8 i am providing 3928 mm square similarly on the compression side i am providing 1964 okay so we can see that actually what is provided is higher than what the demand is required so i don't really need to go for the development length we calculated for developing 0.87 fy so let's check now that modification is what we said ast required is this but actually provided is this ac required compression steel required is 1964 and ac provided is also high which is 1964 1694 and 1964 now the reduced development length can be calculated by if you are providing more steel than what is actually required then you need don't need to put development length to develop a stress of 0.87 fy so i can reduce it by this factor which is as provided by as provided as required by as provided then it works out to be 827 mm now in this case we have calculated that we have we have actually 850 mm and what i need is only 827 mm so the provided anchorage is sufficient because i have over designed the section 
slightly. Because I over designed it, the amount of steel provided is higher. The steel may not reach the level of your tensile stress, uh, yield strength. It can be at a lower stress also. So the development length can be proportionately reduced. But in my opinion, it's not a good practice. So if you are providing steel, you should, in at ultimate condition, you should be able to develop 0.87 FR. So I would rather uh, increase this by another 50 mm to achieve the full yield stress. That's a good way of effectively utilizing the steel. Okay. Similarly, for compression power also, the reduced length works out to be 617. But even the reduced effect is not sufficient because we have only 300. So this also what we can do is provide this additional additional bar like this, U band like this. Okay. So in this way, I can achieve what the development length is required for compression. So you can take 90 degree band plus extension. So required extension is about 125. So this distance is actually only 125 is required. Okay. So if I extend this by 125 mm, then your development length we are meeting the norms. So this is a quick example. So development length is you have to check for the development length, which is very important. All right. So quickly now let us see uh, what are bar splices and why do we need bar splices? So splicing of bars are commonly done in the field because I cannot transport the bar for a very long length. If it is a post tension cable, they are coils. It can be coiled into any length and you can transport it. But for uh, regular deformed steel rebars, they are quite stiff. You cannot make them as a coil. You have to cut it and transport it to the length. Usually uh, in India, either transported as a, a 9 meter or a 12 meter length, okay, depending upon what uh, the trailer size and truck sizes that are available. Usually they are 12 meters maximum. Right. So, and for, for construction for long spans, you know, we have to connect these bars. So we need splices. And also sometimes if diameter is large, diameter is not really required at certain locations, I can change the diameter, right, to re reduce the diameter. So that's why we need splices. Splices are basically mechanisms of connecting these bars because I cannot have an indefinitely long bar length depending upon what we need. We have to connect them. So what are the different types of splices available? They can be buttered each other and welded and buttered and welded that is one way of joining that is the best but when you weld it you have to be careful because you're going to put a lot of heat and your uh, strength at the locations will come down at least close to the weld at the weld location you may achieve the strength but nearby the weld your lot of heat will be there so it will fail it will it will fail at a lower stress then we have mechanical connectors Okay, they should develop 125 percentage of your yield distance. So when you do butting and welding or mechanical connectors, we should the bar should be able to develop 125 percentage of its yield strength. The most commonly used is a lap splice. Okay, they are put on side by side each other and they are spliced. Okay, so splices in flexural members should not be at section. This is very important. We should not splice the bars where the bending moment is more than 50 percentage of the moment resistance. Okay, that means the capacity of the provided reinforcement if it is at least twice that of what the demand is requiring then only at that locations I can put if it is not so then we cannot do the splicing and not more than half the bars shall be spliced at any section so only at any point of time only 50% of the bars can be spliced so then I have to stagger them so 50% of bars I splice at one location then I go a little distance after development length and then I uh, splice the remaining 50%. That is all. But we cannot splice all the bars at one location. That's what class 26.25 tells you. Now, these are some of the pictures. Okay, you see here slightly these bars are bent. Okay, why do we do this? So that this line of action is nearly same. So always the tension line of action should be nearly same. That is why one location of the bar is usually bent, and this has to be at least your development length. Right? So also we can use mechanical couplers like this. Okay, you see, and for these mechanical splices, for new construction we can do. Okay, you have to thread it. Right, this is also thread. Then you attach them and you screw them. Okay, In that way you can form mechanical. It is more involved a process. You have to create a thread and you have to 
screw them together right so it's a involved process in addition to there is other type is there where you put a sleeve and then you put some screws on the lateral side so this is much easier for us to implement it in the field in fact if you have an existing construction if you want to add another bar then this is a more convenient way because you existing one you cannot thread it right so this is another variety so bar splicing using couples now when you have splices okay, you can see here that you need to make sure that the line of action is nearly same so both the sides you can bend it like this so that you know the the line of action and the slope of this bending should be less than 1 in 6 okay and uh, usually the build up of a bar if you look at it for bond the first bar will drop in bond stress like this it will develop like this and then your second bar will develop bond force like this so in that way average bond stress will be achieved the best thing is to basically add this kind of spiral but uh, generally it is not done so that is going to create some confinement it will not let the bars to slide off but it is rarely done in the field and uh, they just lap it like this and then you put some additional transverse reinforcement can be provided so that they don't uh, come out of each other so again the staggering of splicing has to be done okay so if i am doing let's say splicing like this at least i should go 1.3 times your development length and then do the splicing like this okay so these are some of the schematics that we need to consider when you are doing splicing Right. So again, uh, splicing also when you do it, you can have these kind of cracks due to the splitting. Okay, and that we need to be very careful about. Okay, and why it happens? Again, we talked about this radial stresses that develop. Right. So when you have two bars that are attached to each other, then you can have these kind of crack forming between those two bars that are being spliced. Okay, that why does it happen? We also talked about this because of this. Or radial stresses that are developing at the wedge locations then if you're not careful then you can have these kind of failure so lap splices can come out so you can have this kind of splitting and the concrete cover can pop out okay in that way then your bars will not be able to do it so we need to make sure that this doesn't happen and uh, that is the reason the forces have to be collinear between the two bars so that is the reason we bend those two bars so that the line of action at the joining is going to be more or less collinear right? right so let us summarize whatever we have discussed in this part of the module we discuss what is bond why bond is required bond is required in flexure to make sure you know then only the plane sections remain plane bending will be valid and we also looked at different types of bond failures horizontal splitting vertical splitting and so on and we also looked at what is development length for a given section and how it is being calculated using IS code provisions. And finally, we also discussed about types of bar splices that are used in field. Right. So with this, we'll complete this module. I would like to thank my MTech student, Mr. Ranjit Kumar, for helping me with the slide preparation and some uh, other references that you can look at. Uh, White and McGregor is a good reference. Uh, that you can look at where uh, some of the mechanisms are very well explained. So we'll continue in the next model. Thank you.